So we're going to start talking in this next video about absolute inequalities. So looking at something like 2x, absolute value of 2x plus 1, less than 5. So using the method that we talked about in the last video, I'm going to talk here about looking at the same setup. We say, okay, the absolute value of 2x minus negative 1, in order to talk about absolute value in terms of distance is less than 5. Now that we have this set up, we can come over at our number line. Our target value is negative 1. And the value that we're trying to find is 2x. And the distance that we are comparing this to is 5. So we go 5 up and 5 down, just like we did in the equation video. Going up, this is 5 plus a negative 1 is going to be 4. And negative 1 minus 5 is going to be negative 6. Now, we are not actually allowed to be at the borders of this setup because we have a strictly less than symbol here. So we are going to open, have open circles at both 6 and positive 4. And we want our distance. The absolute value, again, remember, is a distance. So we want our distance to be less than 5. So what does that mean? Well, it means that we want the values that are closer to negative 1 than negative 6 or positive 4. So we're going to color in the region that is between negative 6 and positive 4. Then, just as we did last time, we're going to divide everything by 2. Now we want to find our comparison to just x, not 2x. With this, we end up with 4 divided by 2 is 2. Negative 1 half is our target value now. And negative 6 over 2 is negative 3. We have open circles at negative 3 and positive 2. Everything was shaded in between. And our distance is, at this point, it's more of a check just to make sure that we have it right, is 5 halves. Realistically, you don't even need to write the distances nor even the target value. Um, the outer points are really just what we care about. All right, so then our solution for this is that x is going to be on the interval from negative 3 all the way up through positive 2. If you don't know what interval notation is or how it's expressed, um, there are plenty of other videos out there. I'll probably do one at some point. But this is going to be our solution for this particular problem up here. So one more time, x is going to be a member of the set starting from negative 3 and going to 2, excluding both negative 3 and positive 2 themselves. Now, if we had set up this uh, differently, and for instance, this was something like negative 3 plus 5x is greater than or equal to 8, right? In doing this setup, we could um, leave this as it is and say, okay, we want to do negative 3 minus a negative 5x. But quite frankly, I don't like having uh, negative x's with us dealing with all of this. So what I'm going to do instead is just rearrange this and change it to absolute value of 5x minus 3 is greater than or equal to 8. We can do this because of the commutativity of addition. So it doesn't matter what order you add these things. You're adding a 5x and a negative 3. And I'll trade it around and make it 5x plus negative 3 or 5x minus 3. And now this sets it up again nicely for coming up with our number line version. So we're trying to find the distance between 5x and 3. We're subtracting 5x and 3. And our distance is now 8, both positive and negative directions. If we go 8 up from 3, we end up at 11. If we go 8 down from 3, we are at negative 5. We are allowed to be at these border points 
greater than or equal to. If we go exactly this distance, we are at these points, and they are acceptable. So our distance needs to be more than 8. We need to be further away from the target than the borders outside of this particular range. And then we need to divide everything by 5 in order to solve for x. With x, we have 11 fifths here, fifths here, negative 5 over 5 is negative 1 solid points at negative 1 and 11 fifths, and then shading out. Again, our distances are fifths. With this, x is going to be a member of the sets from negative infinity up to negative 1, including negative 1, union with set starting at 11 fifths, going up to positive infinity. Right, and there's one other type that we can do. So in this case, if we have negative 4x minus 3 is less than or equal to 7x plus 1. This does make it a bit harder, and this is one of the limitations I was referring to in the previous video. It is slightly strange to work with, but this is actually okay. So the first problem is that we have this negative x in here, negative 4x. My preference is, again, move this around, commute to the other side, so that we are subtracting negative 3 and 4x. Now, your term with the x is technically positive, right? We have this subtraction in between them, but we are subtracting positive 4x. So my thought is just move it around to whatever works best for you whatever allows you to make sure that your x term inside the absolute value is positive. Alright, so this one's going to be a little weird because of the 7x plus 1, but this is still the same idea. We're going to go to a target value here of negative 3, trying to find the distance between negative 3 and 4x, and the distance is 7x plus 1. It's going to be a little bit awkward. 7x plus 1. And then it requires a little more thinking. All right, on the upper side, this is going to be negative 3 plus 7x plus 1. And on the lower side, this is negative 3 minus parentheses 7x plus 1. Those of you who know the algebraic version, this is going to be fairly similar. And we want our value to be less than or equal to, our distance is going to be less than or equal to. So again, we can be at the border points, or we can be within this area. And then at this point, you do actually have to solve for these to figure out what these values are. So if we want to know where the border points are exactly, you could say, well, 4x could be at negative 3 minus parentheses 7x plus 1. Or x could be at negative 3 plus 7x plus 1. It's going to be a little tight in this area, sorry. All right, so 4x is equal to, here you get a negative 7x minus 1 minus 3. It's going to be a negative 7x minus 4. 
on this one we have 4x2, negative 3 plus 1 is going to be positive 7x minus 2. Over on the left-hand equation, I'm going to add 7x to both sides. Make this 11x is equal to negative 4. x is equal to negative or on the right hand side um, I'm going to subtract add 2 it's going to cause us to have 2 equal to 7 minus 4 is 3x so x is equal to 2 thirds. So we can take these and this is going to be x now is negative sevenths up through two thirds. I have solid points at each of them. It's colored between. x is going to go from Four elevenths, positive two thirds. As it turns out, negative four elevenths is not actually going to work. Um, in this particular setup, the way that we have it right now, seven uh, x plus one doesn't actually intersect our absolute value of negative four x minus three at negative four elevenths at all. Um, the equations craft looks something like this. And when we pair them, uh, we'll see that our 7x plus 1 is just a linear function. It is only going to go through being much steeper. It's only going to go through the uh, shallower absolute value function once right here. And that's going to be x equals 2 thirds. At negative 4 elevenths, um, this is what would happen if the 7x plus 1 function were an absolute value and it would come back up. So again, it doesn't actually do this. doesn't actually come back up and reflect back up into another intersection point. It just goes down through it and then keeps going on forever. So this is, as it turns out, an extraneous zero. Or extraneous solution. So what happens is this just comes back. We can also check our values by looking at values like 2 thirds, negative 4 elevenths, and then pick some test values in here. So for instance, test value of 0, do a test value of 1 just to make sure, and do a test value of negative 1. If we plug in negative 1, no, let's do 0 first. If we do a test value of 0 in the original function, we end up with the absolute value of negative 3 is less than or equal to 7x plus 1. So we end up with the absolute value of negative 3 is less than or equal to 1. So this actually fails entirely in this area. Absolute value less than or equal to 1. Right? This whole thing just fails because the absolute value of negative 3 is 3, and 3 is not less than or equal to 1. 1 ends up coming in here. We get 1, so that's negative 4 minus 3. Absolute value of negative 7 is just going to be 7. It is less than or equal to, plug in 1 for x, 7 plus 1 is 8. So 7 is less than 8 is true. We do have section of the graph is going to have the absolute value function less than or equal to our 
linear function. I'm going to accept these values over here from x equals 2 thirds on up toward infinity. And then when we start looking back at, let's say, negative 1, we plug in negative 1, we get positive 4 minus 3 is going to be 1. The absolute value is 1. Less than or equal to negative 1 times 7 is negative 7 plus 1 is negative 6. So again, we get a failing value here. The only values that actually work are going to be from 2 thirds up into the positive direction. Now again, the reason why all this exists, and we'll actually see it in the algebraic version as well, is because when we have, let's just cross this out, um, when we have an absolute value function, 7x plus 1, this uh, part of the function would bounce back up again. We would have gotten that uh, 1 was less than or equal to the absolute value of negative 6. So 1 is less than or equal to 6. And this would have passed over on the left-hand side. Now again, why my method in particular doesn't work with this kind of function, it's just really too bad. Um, <laughs> I was I was kind of hoping it would work, but you know the problem is that we get a bit of a problem when you start bringing variables into this function itself. All right, so again, we're going to have to fall back on more traditional methods if we start introducing variables into our distances, just because it complicates things. I will make another video on the algebraic method, which is going to break down how to do it in a way that gets rid of some of the tricks you've probably been used to using over the years.